Boxing King Media in association with Boxstraw, uh, with the King of Girth himself, Prince Patel, in a lovely, beautiful setting here at, here at Nando's Outdoors in uh, Wembley. Uh, Prince, how are you doing? Um, I'm good, man. I'm good. Um, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Um, obviously, we're here. Wembley's literally minutes away from here. Your arch nemesis, Sonny Edwards, is fighting in a couple of days' time. We'll, we'll come to Sonny, but I've got to say, this humongous dude you've got next to you, I want to say humongous in the nicest way possible. What, what's, what's with the extra security? Uh, just ignore him. Just act like he's not there, man. Just act like he's not there. Big man, um, do, you, do you talk much? Or obviously, I've not seen you before. No, I have very few words to say. I just keep myself to myself, and when Prince needs me about, I'm about. That's pretty much it. Are you, are you like security, Prince? Is this guy like security for you? Ultra he's, he's, security, you could call it that. He's one of the guys that we use sometimes. Big man, it looks like you're here for smoke. So uh, if anything does happen, are you, are you ready to rock and roll? Yeah, why not? I'm always ready to go. I'm ready to go, man. Anytime. You're obviously sat down, but I'm just curious. How, how big are you, like, height and size-wise? Six foot four, 23 stone, 150 kg. I want and untold flesh, otherwise oh. fat. Well, <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, all I know is I'm not. I'm not. What, what he was asking you is he wanted to know your measurements, like you know the, yeah, the length, the girth. That's what he was after. Length and girth. Oh, you gotta save that for only fans, mate. You know what I mean, Harry? <laughs> but yeah, fuck you know, man. It's what it is. Let's get to the boxing. Let's get to the boxing. That's what they're here for. It's getting really awkward, man. It's getting really awkward. I don't really want to talk about this dude's girth and his length size, man. I'll let you guys talk about that in private, uh, Prince. Um, so l let's just talk, man. So it's been um, a few weeks now since you got your, your comeback win in the UK. Um, you had a big crowd, you know, a lot of people knocked you for saying, no, you don't have a crowd, you don't have a fan base. I was there, there were a good two, three hundred um, fans there with Indian flags. And, you know, normally what you say, it was true. I got to see it first hand. Yeah, the prince never lies. That's one thing, you know. Indian men never lie, and uh, I never lie. Whatever I say is true. Um, what I will say is, you said people say that I don't really bring numbers and stuff. That's the guy you you were, you were referring to earlier, the one that looks like Gollum, the one that released uh, a, a PlayStation game this week, which was a two out of ten according to most reviews. Um, uh, the guy who's fighting a guy called Campos, who no one's ever heard of, yet you gave him a voluntary um, opportunity to fight for your title. You're saying he's only turning up for a paycheck. So why would you fight a guy who's only turned up for a paycheck for a voluntary defence? You know, this is the reason why the man who runs Boxing King Media, the, the largest, the fastest growing boxing platform in the world today, is voice noting me on WhatsApp, asking to buy me Nando's and saying, look, can you come to Sonny's press conferences? Can you come to Sonny's um, public workout? Can you do all this stuff? Because he knows you're gonna generate no views. And we're in the game where we, we need posse and views. And that's something you're lacking in, in every department. Um, yeah, it seems that you're dealing with a lot of stress, obviously, with your hairline pushing all the way back there. It's just, I know I'm trying to help you. I know he's your friend and that, but you need, you, you need to start fighting people that people have heard of. You know, especially you've got TV backing, you've got a budget, you've got a good budget. I heard the zone got a girthy budget. There's other fighters that are known that you could have been fighting. I'm going to say, just for clarity, I didn't ask you to come to the press conference. I asked you if you was coming to the press conference, so there's a big difference there. Uh, same difference, really, man. You wanted me to be around Sonny to try and boost Sonny's profile because you knew the Boxing King media guys and the Prince of Hollicks would all be tuning in. Well, I know you guys turned up yourself and Dean turned up to the uh, the Boxer uh, media event a few few weeks ago, so I assumed you may turn up, but obviously you're not, you didn't come up to the press conference, but we're here at Wembley. You never know, Sonny you might rock up for uh, Nando's, but I'm going to come back to him. Um, the last time we spoke was uh, at the uh, Misfits show, where yourself and Isaac Lowe had uh, a bit of a ruckus. Uh, what, what is the latest with uh, Isaac Lowe? Are you likely to fight Isaac, or you know where are we with that? Well, I've packed on a bit of girth, as you can see. Some extra girth's packed on. But Isaac's slow at the moment. He's run away to Thailand for sexual reasons. He's run away from Thailand for sexual reasons. And according to the promoter that wants to stage the fight, he's gone missing. He ain't answering his phone now. He ain't answering no questions. Now that I've put on a bit of girth, he's just gone missing. So you're telling me discussions were ongoing, um, but obviously he's away with Tyson Fury on um, like some sort of media tour. Um, so because of that, there's nothing concrete. 
why would why would Isaac even be on a media tour? No one cares about that guy. Look at the videos he does. He gets no views. No one interacts with the videos he does. The only time he gets interactions is when I mention him and people laugh at him on Twitter. That's the only time he gets interaction. When he's walking around his, his place of living, spitting on himself on video and stuff. Like, I don't know, man. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a bit weird. Why would he need to be in Thailand? He's out in Thailand, literally, to hold Tyson Fury's bag and to perform sexual acts on John Fury. That's all I've been told. I tell you, when you make comments like that, I, I would just avoid John Fury because John Fury calls people out and um, he's the last person I'd be um, making jokes like that about. Well, to be honest, like, I don't want to look like I'm like, trying to have a go at old, old age people because obviously I respect people that are older than me, but I'm not scared of John Fury. If, um, if he wants to do a, gl a glorified spa with some big gloves, I'm happy to do that. Right, so Isaac Law at the minute looks like it's uh, a dead end. So where are we where, where are we at with stuff? Uh, obviously, Dean's got a show this Saturday. Um, obviously, you're not fighting on that. So what, what's, what's plan B? I'm um, likely to be fighting on Dean's show on July 29th. I need to have a match where my actual coach turns up. Um, he didn't turn up because uh, Lucy Wildhart was fighting Michaela Mayer. So he, uh, he, he for, for Lucy's safety, he said that he wanted to go help her in the corner and stuff. So... I'm used to being on my own anyway, so I just turned up, laid the smack down anyway. And uh, this time he's going to be in my corner. Then hopefully after that September we have a big fight. To be honest, I don't mind fighting Isaac in July. If Isaac wants to step up to the plate, we can negotiate the weight and um, can get his ass beat up. Isaac's just like a standard opponent to get to the next level. Like, I don't see him as a problem. I don't think, I don't think he's, uh, he's meant to be bigger than me, but when I saw him in person, he didn't look bigger than me. He's about the same height. Packed on a bit of girth, as you can see. And um, I believe I'm a better boxer than him. And I actually do believe I'm stronger than him. So realistically talking, I don't see any ways of him beating me. Sound. And, and then moving on to uh, Sonny. Obviously, you mentioned him a, a bit ago. And Sonny was quite open in the press conference today, saying that Andres Compos is uh, he's even predicting a potential knockout, saying he's, he shouldn't even be in... in uh, in the ring with him, so uh, I'm guessing you've seen some of Campos. What do you make of him? I've seen nothing of Campos. I don't even know who he was. I only found out who Campos was is when he was fighting Sonny. I think I see a face-off with Sonny where he um, pushed his hat off and had some like fake stuff speaking to him. The thing is, why why would you use profanity against a guy who clearly doesn't understand any words of English? No, yeah. So you're just raising your voice at someone who don't understand English. You're fighting a guy who, in your words, has never done 12 rounds before. The fact that the fact is, oh, you, Campos is obviously going to bring no audience to the to the crowd. Um, Sonny doesn't sell no tickets. He might as well have fought my boy Jungir Khan from Stonebridge Boxing Club. Yeah, Jungir Khan's just an amateur. He's sitting over there, but Jungir could have. He's 71 kg. Bro, Jungir could get down to fight Sonny. Yeah, he doesn't have to be 100% to fight someone like Sonny. Sonny's not very good. He has no power. That's why when you mentioned knockouts, let me spat my drink out. I think the both of them combined have got like eight knockouts in their fights combined. So, do you think there's much chance of Sonny, Sonny stopping him? I think he's basing it on the fact that uh, Campos struggles in the later rounds. I don't care. The thing is that I, I know, like we've spoke a bit about Sonny here. I actually don't care about Sonny. He keeps saying that my, I, I'm going to be fighting. Yeah, I'm always there to fight him. To be honest, I'm I'm not always there to fight you. Like, for me to make flyweight, I'm going to have to diet. That's obvious, yeah. I've got way more length than him. I've got way more girth than him. For me to get down, I'm going to have to diet. If that fight's not what... It, 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 I'm not begging someone like... I said this before. Like, I'm not, why would I beg someone like Sonny? Look at the state of him. Anyone who has to beg someone like that to have a conversation with, to engage into any sort of battle with, stupid. Like, it's like talking to a girl that looks like my guy next to me. You're not... It's... You're, non -brainer. It's a no-brainer, isn't it? Like... <laughs> Not knocking uh, girls that look like uh, your uh, security guy, but um, some really people like that. I don't think anyone would want to speak to a woman that looks like me. Well, he yeah, need yeah. his head examined, but yeah, fuck you know. I was uh, trying to get into sparring before lockdown. What did you do to that guy that looked like Fraser Clark in, uh, in Wembley? Uh, rather not uh, say anything about <laughs> that. Um, basically, trying to get into sparring, <laughs> professional sparring. A few. Uh, Fighters I know, followed them on Instagram, no replies. I don't know what happened, but pro spine is what I want to do, innit? So, 
you guys got that work for me. I'm here. Give me a couple months to get in shape. Ready to go, man. If anybody wants to spar, Prince Patel's uh, secure. I'm going to call him the security guy because I don't know Devastator. much of Devastator. Uh, if anyone wants to spar him, uh, hit Prince Patel up on Instagram. To be honest, I don't really care about that. Isaac Lowe needs to stop running. That's what we need to start saying. Stop going to Thailand for sexual reasons. Come back to the UK. Sign a contract that's been offered to you and take your beating like a man. And let me say something quickly. If all these heavyweights want sparring, you guys need to come with that. Cold hard cash, yeah? Cold hard cash, liquid cash, I was going to say. Cold hard liquid cash. That's what I'm after. Pound the flesh, that's it. Right, uh, Prince, uh, the other thing I want to speak to you about is, did you watch this, I know you said you don't want to talk about something, I've got to get, get you to watch this. Did you watch this video? Um, what did you make of it? I like what I say, come and discuss it with me. Oh, if sir. you want to start alluding to violence, like, I live in a world of violence. I was born in violence. I was made in violence. I'm moulded in it. I championed in violence. So violence and confrontation, that's any given day for me. So that's not an issue. But I can communicate clearly enough and I can demonstrate as to why I think and why I say what I say. And I will stand on anything I've ever said. I said it, I meant it. So, right. yeah, born in violence, uh, what did you make of that? Uh, he was born in Beddington Lane, to be exact, yeah. Beddington Lane went to a private school in Beddington Lane as well, yeah. To Wall no, went to Wallington Boy School. I mean, that's a private school as well, if I'm correct, yeah. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure he was raised in violence. I think what this guy's done is... He's obviously starred in three films, hasn't he? The Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring, The Twin Towers, all that rubbish. And um, he's trying to get another movie scene, ain't he? Like, he's trying to, he's trying to come across like Bane from, uh, from Batman. He's obviously watched too much movies. He's, it, this is the sort of guy yeah, where you, you know he's Googling on, like, how to fight on the streets. How to do this. It's obvious, like, look at the state of him. Do you reality. really believe, yeah, that In someone that reality. looks like that, yeah, can really allude to violence to someone else? In an actual close confront, that oh, close, man. close confined space with someone? No way. I'm not making out that I'm a tough guy in the streets or whatever, because I'm not. I'm far from it. You're right. I'm far from it. But, you know, you have to give... Sure. What's your guy idea about to kick off or something? Yeah, you're walking past and fucking walk on, bro. I remember you, bro. Shut up, man. Bruv, I'll mash you up, bro. Walk off. Sorry. Uh, that wasn't planned, so I don't, I don't really know what's going on over there, but uh, I, I was just going to say, Prince, um, your, your, guy's on, your guy's on smoke. Um, coming back to uh, Sonny, You've got, you've obviously got to uh, see what he did last time round. Uh, do you not rate him for his defensive skills? Forget the punch power, everything else. Do you rate him for his defensive skills? And uh, if you guys were ever to fight, no matter what weight it would be, how would you land a shot on him? Because a lot of people have struggled. To be honest, I feel sorry for Sonny. You know, like at the moment, it looks like he's getting pushed heavy by the zone and by Eddie Hearn. But in reality, he's just being pushed to be used as an opponent for Ban Rodriguez. Once he gets beat. It's the same position as his brother. Once you lose your world title, you you go back to the... You, well, you don't go back because you've always been given opportunities. You end up going on small shows. Just like your brother. He's fighting tomorrow against a guy with a losing record. He's fighting a guy with a losing record because, number one, no TV promoter is interested in your brother. And number two, he can't sell tickets. He can't sell tickets. That's why he's fighting on a Kieran Farrell show, which is probably one of the worst shows in the UK. And he sells no tickets. It's the fact. I'm going to have to correct you on that. The, the, the guy that Charlie's fighting tomorrow is, is all right. about that altercation there. Just uh, a guy I had problems with before. He just walked past. Like I said, I'm ready to go, man. I fear no one but God, bruv. No man, bruv. Like I said, if you guys want sparring these heavyweights, you guys need to come with some cash, cold, liquid cash. That money. Yeah, we can do some rounds in the gym. Let me know. Give me some time. Cool. That's it. Top man. Um, Going yeah, back to Charlie's opponent, Charlie's opponent. He, he, he's, he's good. Yeah, he beat an undefeated uh, Andre Grant last time round. I think he was on your he undercard. On yeah, yeah. So the guy's really good, and that's a he's tough really, fight for really a comeback. Good. He's really good, yeah. Uh, I'd say so, and I think he got knocked out in one or two rounds against Chris Bork, if I'm correct, didn't he? I can't remember, but I know. Um, 
he obviously he got very close to stopping Andre Grant last time. He brings smoke, and for somebody who's been out for nearly two years, that's not an easy fight to come back to. He beat Grant on points, but from what I, the only other fight I've seen of him is he um, he, he got stopped against Chris Ball. Chris Ball's a good fighter as well, but I don't know, man. I just think like, nah, that's that's bullshit. That's a journey, man. That's a that's a live journey, man. It comes to win a little bit, but still, like you you're supposed to be a former WBC world champion. You've had two fights since then because he was a bit scared, got a little bit emotional because he got beat up, dived on the floor, and luckily that fight got changed for a no contest. That would have been another knockout loss on your record. And the, um, I don't know, like, where does he go from here? Realistically, where does he go? He can't sell tickets. Just nope. speaking as a neutral, uh, yeah. Prince, I think it's a good statement from him for fighting this guy in a comeback fight because the guy can really fight. Uh, sorry, that was my foot. The guy has, um, more, the guy has more losses than wins. Like, come on, pull your tongue out his ass. No, I, 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 I just give neutral opinions, and I, my honest opinion is, is this guy can fight. Uh, let's let's see what happens, because I, I think it's a, it's a risky fight, potentially. Uh, last thing I've got to ask you, Prince, is well, obviously we've seen uh, Time Booth um, and Sonny have this big back and forth, which obviously went viral recently. Um, one of the things I'm curious about is Time prefers black women. Sorry, he prefers white women. Sonny prefers black women. What does Prince Patel prefer? For money, um, uh, nah, to be honest, uh, sexually, what do I prefer? In any context, currency. I prefer currency, man. Currency. I prefer money, man. That's what I'm out. I, I like money. Money makes me come, bitch. So, so you're saying like women with money? Um, yeah, nah, to be honest, actually, I'll be honest, I'm into, I'm, in, I'm into white women, man. I'm into mature white women. I like them to be quite, quite tick as well, not too Gosh. big. Can't, not, not quite BBW jiggly everywhere. But Describe like. the perfect woman for Prince Patel. Pimped up here, red nose, blonde hair, busty. I quite like, quite like you know Camilla. Camilla. Parker Balls. Queen Camilla, okay. King's wife. Yeah, she'd get it. So the prince prefers the elder ladies. I like mature women, isn't it? I, I'm open about that. I like, I like mature women. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm, in a, I'm a good looking, exotic Indian stud. A young stud. I obviously, women like me. They're, they're women of all ages above 18, I have to clarify that there, like me, 100%. And the thing is, as well, like, I know we talked earlier about, like, you said, um, like, you messaged me asking if I was going to come and stuff. Would you have messaged a Matt Bum Window or a Marcel Bumway or a Isaac Slow or a Nathaniel Collins, he's British and Commonwealth champion. Would you have asked these guys to come, like, to do an interview and stuff? You wouldn't. No, because they don't live anywhere near Wembley, and I know you're not too far from here. Okay. So, what about all the other the other low weight guys that are in um, in London that you could have potentially asked? Well, I think it makes sense. You've got a rivalry with Sonny, and uh, I, st I still hope at some point down the line we get that fight because I think that press conference is going to be lit. Um, so, yeah, we'll just keep building it. But do you know what it is, though? I think as well, like you see, like. You say I've got a big rivalry with Sonny. Sonny's a flyweight. I've also now got a rivalry with Isaac Lowe, who's a featherweight. So do you, know, do you know what it is? It's like I'm a true throwback fighter. I'm one of them old school, rare breed sort of fighters where it doesn't really matter what weight they are. My name can get thrown around with these guys. I've got the length, I've got the girth to be fighting these sorts of people. And that shows how poor... The longevity. The longevity, of course. Longevity, the yeah, got the, got, the, got the cardiovascular system. but um. What you got, what you got to realise as well is, you see in these lower weights, yeah. Apart from maybe Lee Woods, who just and Josh Warrington who fight in stadiums and at that world level, you look at like super bantamweight and under, even featherweight at British level. Who can you really mention that will get the views, that would generate and get a buzz, get people talking? I give you that. You definitely, definitely attract an audience and people that's comment and engage on, on your videos. Uh, and I think the world we live in, that's just the way it is. Unfortunately, if you don't talk and you stay quiet. Yeah, yeah. People don't watch. Closed mouths don't get fed. You can ask my guy here, like, he's eating a lot of food, this guy, yeah? He's obviously opening his mouth, do you know what I'm saying? So, what I'm saying is that's five weight divisions that people are referring me to. So, do you know what these guys in these lower weights need to start doing from fly away to featherweight? They need to bow their heads in humble gratitude. They need to bow down. They need to accept me. They need to appreciate me. They need to thank me. They need to thank me for being what I am. For them, not just thanking me, they need to thank God for blessing me with the, with the charisma that I've got, the, um, the vocal abilities to speak, being one of the sexiest guys in the game today, 
bringing that sort of attention. Listen, 10 years ago, no one used to talk about female boxing, is that correct? Uh, probably, yeah, ago. yeah. Yeah, 10 years ago. At the moment, no one really speaks about lower weight boxing. I'm going to change that. I'm going to change that, or I'm going to make it where there's no discrimination towards you little guys. So you guys like Matt Bumwindle, who's fighting Conor Bum Butler for a European title tomorrow, might actually get spoken about. You see what I'm saying? I'm doing it for you guys. So you guys need to be... Really, I should make a, a PayPal and a cash app, and you guys should just be throwing me money for this. You know, because I'm the guy who's putting the lower weights on the map. I'm the guy that makes the, the boxing... I'm the reason why Boxing King Media is the fastest growing boxing platform out there think about you know when you like obviously on your youtube you can check the demograph of who's subscribing to your channel how many women subscribers from the age of 40 50 have joined your channel since i've been coming on it i i don't know but i'm assuming there might might be some it's a girthy amount i can guarantee that i can guarantee it if you was to release your demograph you will see a girthy amount of 40 and 50 year old mature white woman log it into your account is it, is it the hair do you think it's the hair that's doing it it's everything I'm an, I'm an exotic stud if you look at me like let's let's be real compare me compare Isaac Slow and compare Sonny one looks like Gollum one spits <laughs> and drools while he's eating and one looks like an exotic young stud an athletic young stud but which one can fight the best and which one's going to come out on top if there's some sort of triangle of fights if we done a triple threat match, I'll take them both at the same time. I could force Sonny to get bent over by Isaac and make that happen. For you. No one wants to see that, but I could make that happen if he was in a confined space. Just saying. Any final good luck message to Sonny? Uh, I'm sure you want him to win, and because uh, I'm sure it's somewhere down the line, whether it's at super flyweight or even bantamweight, catchweight, I'm home. sure you'd love that fight. Bring it home. To be honest, I don't really care about Sonny, yeah? Um, if he gets beat, he's just cost himself and that so-called match that's always there for him because I'm not interested in a guy that ain't got a world title. Simple as that. You have to win or you lose the opportunity. Any final message to the girth maniacs? Obviously, the, the cash app, the PayPal's um, going to be opening up soon. Um, obviously, people know that I've opened up the Church of Girth. The Church of Girth's uh, a real thing. No, no, no. No, no. Bro, bro, but they, they, there's no only fans, bro. <laughs> it was just chill, a bro. It chill. was a cheap joke. Yeah, but just chill. All right, all right. It's a joke. Yeah, so basically, yeah, um, there's, there's the, the, the Church of Girth's opened up. We've got. We've got the Church of Girth that's opened up. Um, we're going to be taking donations and uh, we're going to be making a movement quite, quite big, you know. Fuck, forget all this. Bosh! It's going to be keep it girthy, you know. That's what the kids are going to be saying soon. That like, keep it girthy. All right, everyone, keep it girthy. Prince Patel, thank you for your time. Mm -hmm.